With Liquor Barn, you can shop your favorite bourbon, that perfect bottle of wine, or discover something new. To place an order for pickup or delivery, download the Liquor Barn app, visit liquorbarn.com, or call your nearest Liquor Barn location. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our email list for all the latest news on products, promotions, and events. Liquor Barn, where Kentuckians go to celebrate life. Cheers! Welcome to the Bourbon Life Podcast, your source for all things bourbon. Join your hosts, Mark and Matt, as they drink and review bourbons, share news about upcoming events, interview the who's who in the bourbon world, and most importantly, bring you along for the fun of living the bourbon life. Now, here's your hosts, Mark and Matt. All right, everybody, welcome back for another episode of the Bourbon Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark, and with me tonight live in the Bourbon Life Studios, it is the Bourbon Life Crew. We got a we got a great show lined up tonight, and we actually have someone else joining us on the phone uh, deep in the heart of Texas or some, some song like that. But anyway, I'm going to tell everybody who we have with us here at the table. We got Chad. What it is. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Stacy. Hello. And we've got, of course, my co-host, Matt. Hey, Mark. How you doing this evening, man? I'm doing good, Matt. And we've got Philip as well. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> you guys, I forget to call out your, your Instagram handles. So you want Chad? Yeah. Hey, this is Chad with At My Daily Bourbon. Yeah, Stacy. This is Stacy at Freckled and Chard. And we'll skip Philip. No, Philip, go ahead. And, uh, this is Philip at Bourbon Hunting KY. There you go. And we've got a new member of the crew that's joining us. Yeah, big, huge news. Big announcement today. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> we had breaking news. That's right. New new podcast uh, show announced today uh, by the newest member of the Bourbon Life crew, Big Chief, man. Mike, how you doing down there? I'm doing great. So uh, most of your listeners or some of them might know me as the uh, Weedy King of the Kentucky. That's right. Uh, big Chief. Uh or the big bad booty daddy of bourbon uh, <laughs> you know that's who i am i just left kentucky i'm down here in southeast texas right now in this uh swamp land um but living life down here hunting for bourbon down here my days off yeah uh, life couldn't be greater right now i was gonna say it sounds like when we talk on the phone man it sounds like you're having a great time down there even though it's probably still 90 degrees in texas right <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, 80. <laughs> Close enough. Well, it's a yeah. good thing you're not in West Texas. They just got hit with a bunch of snow. Oh, did they? Yeah. Yeah, so he, El Paso got like, what, four inches or something? Well, he just got a tornado. I was so. going to say, he just said earlier, yeah. man, he got a tornado. So he's not not that lucky, right? I mean, goodness let's, gracious. Let's say, uh, let's say a quick prayer for all the people out there in Southeast Texas and uh, uh, Louisiana that got hit by these storms. Uh yeah, we were here joking around, but uh, there's many people tonight that probably uh, um, are going to be without a house or a home, and uh, they're suffering. So I'll raise your my glass to you and uh, say, hey, I hope the, the best for you. And yeah, um, you know, definitely, man. We we agree. We're right there with you. We're raising our glasses here, and even going to have a little sip before we talk about what we're what we're drinking here. So. Yeah, so I, I launched the new show today with the help of, you know, I got a big shout out to Mark. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't know, but Mark texted me while I was at the Owl uh, in San Antonio and said, give me a call. Man. I remember that you know, place. What are you doing? And uh, I was like, uh, well, he's like, what are you doing? Why, why aren't you in whiskey? So um, we had lots of long conversations and, and back at it I am. And, uh, you know, Mark I appreciate the push and saying I belong in whiskey, belong in so my new podcast will be the whiskey trip. Yeah. Uh, Route 66 sign kind of take on that and my travels across whiskey, across the whiskey world. Um, everything from scotch to Irish whiskey, to Japanese whiskey, whiskey from India, um, whiskey from Australia. And, uh, man, I can't, the love I've gotten from the bourbon community, the whiskey community has been, simply amazing uh you know it, it just warms my heart yeah and that's awesome man I mean, and we're glad to have you with us and you know doing this show 
Um, it's going to be under the kind of under the bourbon life umbrella, just because we've got the built-in platform. Uh, but Mike's going to be doing his show. It's, you know, his guests and his way he wants to handle it. So it's going to be, going to be a lot of fun and, uh, looking forward to seeing what, what great stuff you, you come up with down there. So you said earlier, you've got like 10 cases of bourbon in the back of your truck. So what are you drinking tonight down there? Well, I'll reach back in the back because I have some where me and my wife are staying in a one cabin right now. Oh, wow. Uh, in, the, in the woods, in the Airbnb. Um, but in the back of my pickup, just riding around for the last two weeks, is a bull uh, with a purple top on it. So that will be the Willard Weeded 8 year old 108 proof. Uh, and this was a birthday gift last year. Okay. Uh, from one badass. Uh, Urban enthusiast Adam Ruthie, buddy, you guys know him out there. Um, just a great guy, and what a great birthday gift he gave to me. Yeah, man, that's that's really cool. Well, you know, in the future, <laughs> and Chad had asked, and I just dropped the ball, man. We were gonna do some pours and some samples and some. What were we gonna do? I forget what we we're even gonna do, man. Basically, on like do the Pepsi challenge where I serve up two two samples, right? They're blind, and then we we find out together what they are. Yeah. Well, we will do that at some point, but I dropped the ball, man. So we weren't able to get your samples sent out to you. So tonight we're just kind of drinking a hodgepodge of stuff. And Philip actually brought a bottle that he's sharing with us that he just popped the cork on the day. Philip, tell everybody what you got over there. So this is a um, Beast Masters uh, Buffalo Trace single barrel pick, barrel number 127, located Q408, and it was distilled uh, 329, 2011. Okay. 90 proof. Uh, I don't know how a, lot of, a whole lot about this group. I got it as a gift from a secret Santa. Uh, it was oh. a Facebook group I was in, and this got sent to me. So Was it the one where you, on you buy a bottle and you send it out, and then you get 60 bottles in return? Have you guys seen that <laughs> that mm-hmm. crap on social oh, yeah. media? It's not yeah. one of those. Oh, yeah. 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 This yeah. was everything you had to send um, had to be at least $50 worth of bourbon. So I got this and the uh, uh, Bowman from the oh yeah yeah oh, AW yeah. Bowman or whatever it is. So it's not a bad secret Santa. No, that's a pretty good secret Santa right there, man. No doubt about it. So Chad, what are you picking up on this one? Since you're sitting right beside me, man, I'm just going to throw it to you and see what you get on it. Uh, Honestly, it's a very basic, just Buffalo Trace nose, a little bit of cherry cola, uh, caramel, butterscotch. I mean, it's not anything super exciting. It's a little bit of ethanol and grassiness to it. Wouldn't you say that they, you got this? Um, This is a, this is from 2019. Okay. It's about, about eight years old. I assume if, if it got in 2019, it says 11 on there. Um, it's good math. Great job. Yeah. Hey, you know, I did drop out of engineering school. <laughs> uh, I went to engineering school once, uh, once, once, once. Um, I don't know. It's the nose isn't exciting. Just kind of, kind of basic. Just yeah. a Buffalo trace to me. Nothing wrong with it. Just, yeah. Stacy, what about you? Well, I think Chad's salty cause this isn't Blanton's, but, uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not February yet. Yeah, not Man. yet guys. It's not Dang. February yet, but I think that the nose on this is very inviting. The cherry cola, definitely a little bit of graham cracker I'm picking up on that as well, but it is a pretty traditional Buffalo trace yeah. nose on it. Yeah. Philip, what about you, man? I mean, I kind of second what they said. I don't really pick up anything much different. Um, uh, yeah. It's yeah, it's I mean it just smells like a typical it's not a real impressive nose. I mean yeah. it's yeah, it's good. It's but. safe. Matt, you're sniffing on it. See, you didn't even I, pour, pa- I passed my I glass. know, I was like, why why aren't mm-hmm. you because you have been in the past at least, you know, sniffing and tasting and swishing. Because Matt's still doing dry jam. Matt's the only he's the sole survivor, man. Stacy and I both We fell off the wagon on the oh, same day. We did. That's why he's the Iron Man. <laughs> oh <laughs> dang, dude. Damn, shots fired. No kidding. Across the bow right there, man. So what'd you pick up, Matt? What do you think? I think everybody hit it right on. It's yeah. got the that cherry cola was really present. A lot of like creamy vanilla, like creamsicle with it too. A little bit of that graham cracker, um, but just a, a basic good nose. Yeah, and this is usually, I mean, well, it used to be like a nineteen dollar bottle, right? Is it? I don't know. What well, it, store you know, store picks are always. Kind oh, of that's like, right. It's yeah. so, it's a store pick. Yeah, so yeah, twenty five whole bucks. I was gonna say it was under fifty because he got that and a, and a Bowman. Yeah, so. So, Big Chief, what about you, man? Are you a Buffalo Trace drinker? Do you like it? Like their stuff? Uh, if I am a weeded guy. <laughs> if it's all sweet, day, yeah. Every day. If it's sweet, yes, he'll drink it if it's got weed in it, right? <laughs> if it was a weeded buffalo, man, <laughs> I, I, I got a coin that right now, the weeded buffalo. There you go. But uh, <laughs> if, if it was a weed, I like Buffalo Trace. It has its place and it has its time. It's good in a cocktail. Um, you know, the price point ain't it. It's not bad, but yeah, it's 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 not a stopper. 
Um, yeah. You know, some of the store picks can be really good, but, you know, my thing with a store, a group pick, or uh, if it's at not proof as a pick, I probably don't want uh, I want something that's all strength. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I get that. Matt, you're not a big fan of the Buffalo Trace, are you? If no, I think I think Big Chief and I on this one yeah. really hit home with regular Buffalo Trace, just with Buffalo Trace bourbon, not to, not the distillery whole, right. but their regular bourbon is kind of a unanimous miss for me. It's just it drinks generic, doesn't really just doesn't really fit well in my profile, which is why I'm always curious to explore some of the single barrels to see what else is yeah. out there with it. But it's it's nothing that I'm ever going to ask for, or pick up, put yeah. on my, my shelf. Well, I think I have, no, I've got one open bottle and I think I maybe have a store pick hiding around here somewhere as well. But yeah, it's, it's not one I'm okay with it. It's the mash bill number one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the lower rye content, yes, okay. which is what? Eight to 10, eight to 12, maybe do we, I mean, I don't know. nobody really knows, right? What is it? Oh, the, ma oh, the mash yeah. bill, mash bill number one. It's top secret. Yeah. Because the high rise, it's the lower end rise. Yeah. yeah, the high rise is only like what twelve to fifteen, maybe something like that. They they people people think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so but Philip, hey, appreciate your brain, and it's a bottle you had that you had never opened, man. So and now I know that I really don't care. If I <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert: the the taste isn't that good. <laughs> it's just it, they went really safe with this pick, like. Uh, very safe. It it's, just doesn't really taste much different than traditional Buffalo Trace to me. Yeah. See, you guys ruined it, man. We didn't get a chance to, you know, come back to the taste. We, the, we can still come back, the to, the it. Profile. Can come back to it. Man. I do want to hear about Big Chief and that Purple Top Will at eight year. Yeah. <laughs> are you? Are you? Have Have you cracked that one yet? Or are you just? Are you just waiting? No, well, I've done cracked this. I've got actually uh, three <laughs> bottles of this right now. Oh shit! Um, Dang. The one was a gift, and the other two bottles were. Uh, MSRP that I just kind of stumbled up on and yeah uh, you know I just got lucky really um the, the bourbon guys were looking down on big <laughs> teeth that day those days uh but I have cracked this uh I've seen a lot of negative reviews about this yeah I have I too that's wonder, why I'm kind of curious about it I always wondered if people really did that they really did taste it or not because many people have reviews on it and i'm like there's not that many bottles out there of it uh for that price and uh what people are saying about it is it just was flat so yeah, actually i've reviewed this and i love it yeah um, have you guys had it i haven't i've I'm, I'm not had it. <laughs> so I, i've had a pour of it uh i'm not a willet fan that's not a shocker uh but the only willet products i've had that i've enjoyed were the weeded single barrels like goodfellas pizza they've done a couple really good ones which i mean those are all those are like five five and six year but they're mm -hmm. higher proof but um i had a friend give me a sample of this and i don't know for me just because where i'm where i'm such a cheap ass that i i personally would buy it but i did think it was good it, it's because i i expected it to be because will it pot stills weeded i was like this is just going to be a slightly oakier version than that and it's not um i i, I enjoyed it i just one of those things where I, if it would have been like 175 i'd buy two what but what is the what's the msrp on this 249 for and it's yeah. eight, eight years old is that right mm -hmm. eight years old but hundred proof and that's where you know i had to compare it to uh, another bourbon you could almost set this side by side with uh Butler antique really they're, okay they're pretty spot on with each other super oily viscous um that nice sugary caramel that you want in a weeder. Um, yeah. Some, some, some flowers in there. I always say uh, to walking into a flower shop. Gotcha. You know, you take in that, that fresh uh, at Valentine day, you know, you walk into the flower shop and uh, you get that, just that whiff of flowers. I, I get all that on this one bourbon right here. And it's, it's beautiful. I get that on well antique and, um, I just love it, but I'm a wheat nut. Um, yeah, right. So let me ask you this though, Mike. I mean, because that's two two forty nine versus. I mean, of course, you know, finding that's hard. Of course, trying to find a Weller Antiques hard, um, but a Weller Antiques going to run you generally around what fifty bucks, maybe something like that. Yeah, fifty bucks is spot on for that. Yeah, 
which, you know, I, so <coughs> it, I guess it depends on, on what you're after, you know, what you enjoy, but Hey, if, you know, obviously we, we've talked about this before, man, if it's a bottle that, that you can afford and it's in your, if, if it's in your budget, then it's, you know, it's your money and, and no, no big thing about it. Right. So enjoy it. Enjoy it. If you want to, man, that's my take on it. It's not going to sit on and look beautiful. That's not how my, I treat my whiskey. You know, I talked about those 10 cases of whiskey back there, and there's probably only five bottles in that 10 cases of whiskey that aren't open right now. Yeah, um, yeah. They get open, and they get drank, and they get shared, and I love sharing whiskey with people. So much so, the other day in the parking lot, one of the guys was like, man, I heard you had a podcast, and I heard you sure like a whiskey dude. And I was like, well, come over here, and... I said, what kind of whiskey do you like? And he's like, whoa, I, I like Maker's Mark. So I opened up my deal, and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy in so, the parking uh, lot giving out free whiskey. Whiskey mobile. <laughs> Are you driving a van? Yeah. 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 Is it a white uh, van? Is it, is it a white panel van that you're driving? Down by the yeah, river? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I opened it up and pulled out of uh, a uh, Maker's Mark 302 and handed it to him and said, hey, here you go. Here you go. Try this. I said, you ever had this before? He's like, I've never even seen one of these before. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was like, well, here, ha- have this, man. And try it out and tell me what you think. And I said, just do me a favor. Uh, I said, how do you drink your whiskey? We start. We had a conversation about how to drink whiskey and stuff. And um, he's like, I never, you know, I started the kind of water you put in there and the kind of ice you pick out and yeah. all that stuff. I said, just do me a favor. Just drink straight out of the glass. And uh, yeah, I said enjoy it like that. So it came back to me. It was like, man, that stuff was spot on, like what you said it was going to be. Um, Very so cool. Like I went back and read one of your reviews. He was like, me and my wife sit there and drink it. I listened to one of your old shows. He was like, how you talk about drinking whiskey, and he's like, we just love it. So now, you know, um, I probably made a fan right there, but a fan to whiskey. Sure. And, uh, you know, share your whiskey with people. Open those bottles and share them. Yep. Um, I agree with know. that hundred percent, man. That's uh, it's always the it's always been my philosophy. And speaking about sharing and opening and drinking, let's now we can talk about the palate. Sorry. Sorry. Now we can you know now we can get back to our regular scheduled format <laughs> of the podcast. You hear this? This is the crew taking? episode. No rules. Yeah. No rules. <laughs> oh wow. Follow the script, Mike. Mike. Are you sure you want? Yeah. You sure you want to be part of this, man? I'll tell you what, dude. Jeez. Mike, do you like to have fun? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, have you ever on, been man. in a Turkish prison? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, have you ever seen a grown man naked? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's not what I signed up for. Yeah, I know. I'm out. Yeah, you're out. I'm out. It's airplane. Sir, I know. Yeah, I know. You know me. I know. Yes. Anyway, so let's talk about the pal. Let's go back with Philip. It falls really flat. There's yeah. no, there's no like punch when you take a sip it's just really the finish is short i mean it's kind of medicinal cherry and it just really doesn't impress me at all matt Uh, you didn't take oh sorry philip go ahead you weren't finished yeah i I think i agree with stacy they when they made this pick they were going customer friendly yeah trying to you know what's going to appeal to the broadest audience because this and it this one doesn't stand out really at all yeah you know that's a good point too talking about picks because chad i know man when we we did a pick together, and I know your thing is funk, right? So my, my, it, it, I, I believe it's probably why I can't do picks anymore. Uh, <laughs> mine sell, but as, as yeah, it's cus, customer route, customer, you know, you want to go safe. You want those heavy caramel butterscotch toffee vanilla notes in there. You don't want to go anything too far out in left field that people might be like. Eh, this doesn't taste like New Riff, or this doesn't taste like Buffalo Trace. And I'm the guy who's like, that's exactly why I picked it because you know I can go get that shit any day of the week that I yeah. want. I want something that kind of crazy but it's, it's still within that realm so stacy what's your thoughts on picks my thoughts on picks i i'm usually an outlier i like i have my top that's usually something that's a little bit more not i won't say funky but something that's not quite as characteristic of the product that i'm picking um if that makes any sense yeah and then but I also understand that like you have to sell what you're picking. Right. So you you don't want to try and, you know, just appease yourself. Yeah. Unless you're Chad and you work for a huge store that can just sit on bottles all, right. all day long. It doesn't right. matter if anybody sells any of it, but I'm just kidding. Yeah. I know it matters. Matt, what's what about you, man? What's been what's your take? Because we've done picks together and uh you guys always outvote me on, on everything. So 
What's <laughs> I just try to go for what I think tastes the best, whether that means it's the funkiest of the funk or if it's something that plays to the characteristics of what we're picking. Yeah. Like kind of holds true to the brand, but I just, I look at it as which of these samples is my favorite, not which do I think is the weirdest, which do I think is the most friendly, which is going to sell, what, right. which is the oldest, which is the highest proof, lowest, just, I just play for taste. That makes sense. Mike, what about you, man? What What are your thoughts? Because you've done some picks. What What are your thoughts on, on the picks? I think it's, it's like Matt said, it is, to me, it's what tastes special that day. What's, what's, what's going to sell, uh, it's what tastes the best, you know? I yeah. got that, I got that sweet tooth, so I usually get out or, just because I'm a big fat guy and I'm looking for <laughs> that, I'm looking for that candy in a bottle, whether it's rye or it's wheat. Uh, I want something sweet to it, and I want caramely and delicious. Uh, you know, I want everybody to enjoy when I'm tasting it. So yeah, that's usually what I'm going for. Uh, I don't want something exactly like the bottle. That, say, if you did a Russell, let's say you did a Russell's. Uh, pick and i just wanted a regular russell i go store and buy one um, yeah right yeah no I, I agree with that and that's i mean i agree with you and matt i mean that's my take on on the on the picks uh of course you know it, for me when we do it as the bourbon life there is that part of me in the back back of my mind it's like this this shit has to sell because <laughs> I mean, otherwise we're gonna be sitting on a lot of bottles so uh there's always that part but i always i always try to pick what tastes good to me. Of course, my, my palate is not a super developed palate by any stretch of the imagination. So what tastes good to me may not taste good to other people. So I, you know, unfortunately I seem when I do a pick, if it's for the bourbon life, now I've gone on picks with other people and it's just like, I'm going to pick what I think tastes good. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Like the liquor barn pick that we did on the foolproof mat, we, we weren't on the hook for that. So it was just like, I'm gonna, I want to pick, I'm going to tell them, you know, what I think tastes the best. Um, but when I, we, Oh, go ahead, Mike. I personally think you probably also should always have a woman on your pick with you. Um, oh, that works just because women's palates are so, uh, <laughs> yeah. they just got better palates than men. Um, and I don't know what she has to say. Hopefully, you got more and more and more. But if, you know, if we had Stacy on a pick with us, you know, I'd really like to hear what she said because she's probably going to have a totally different. Yeah. Notes and all the men. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. So getting back to the palette and finish on this one, Stacy, what'd you think? I'm going to agree with Philip. It was very medicinal on the cherry. Like after it sat for a little bit, um, not a whole lot to write home about. Yeah. Chad, what about you? Uh, I got a little bit of like a grape, like kool aid note. Uh, some, some of that cherry it had, had a good bit of a, a spice to it. It's, I mean, it's still kind of flat, kind of typical Buffalo Trace, but honestly, if you told me this was not like something like Elmer T. Lee, I would believe you as Elmer T. Lee. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's kind of thin. There's no oils to it. It just has those few notes. There's no depth, so. Yeah. And you know, to me, I almost got like a, you're talking about the, the medicinal, like the cherry. To me, it's almost like an artificial sweetener mm -hmm. type of flavor to it on the finish. It was almost like the, like an aspartame or whatever, you yeah. know, that you, that they use to sweeten soft drinks is that kind of almost a bitter, I don't know. It's really weird. Bitter, bitter is a good word to describe it. I'm getting like a, like it's hanging out on my palate. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I haven't <clears throat> drank any Buffalo trace in like two or three years. And so like tasting this now, I can see why like everybody's out chasing it because like, this is like a bottle for the early, I'm just getting into bourbon and yeah. I heard Buffalo trace is good. Like yeah. this is what that is. It's yeah. basic. It's quintessential. It's not, it's not bad. We make it sound like it's bad. Right. It is not bad by any stretch of... of and it's definitely worth the price point. For, yeah, oh, yeah. $19 or a pick at 25 whatever. It's yeah. just, in, in relevance of a pick, usually you want something a little more... Oomph, you know, you want something different than the normal... Like, I can't tell you last time I had regular Buffalo Trace. And if I usually if I have Buffalo Trace, it's mixed with like Diet Coke because mm -hmm. I use it as a mixer. Yeah. Um, but this reminds me so much of just regular Buffalo Trace. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing. Who, who said it tastes like Elmer T. Lee to him, or they thought it would? That me, was Chad. How odd is that? But the Elmer is, you know, Blanton's and um, 
Yeah, the mash bill too. That's mash bill number two. So yeah. you would think, just you know that's got a little bit more to it. Well, just because this has a, that bitterness, a little bit of that spice, it has some florality to it. I uh, usually on the mash bill mm-hmm. two, I get a little more floral notes on it. Um, being at that ninety proof and the fact that it's thin, I've never been an Elmer fan. Uh, just I, I always find those barrels to be that they or the bottles that they the barrels that choose to be a little more on the thin side, a little more floral and, and rye rye grain forward, and that's kind of where this leads. Huh. That makes sense. Well, guys, we're actually at the end of round one here. So let's take a quick break, get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back with more with the Bourbon Life crew in just a minute. Three Chords line of whiskeys embody the spirit of creativity. The whiskey is a true collaboration between producer and composer Neil Giraldo and master blender distiller Ari Sussman. The Three Chord team of expert blenders, coopers, and sensory professionals have developed a multi-step process they call perfectly tuned taste. This process begins by carefully selecting the finest bourbon and rye whiskeys from Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana, and then blending them together. Find out more about the whiskeys and distribution in your area at www.threecordbourbon.com. All right, everybody, welcome back for round two of the Bourbon Life podcast. I'm your host, Mark, and with me tonight, live in the Bourbon Life studios, Matt just made thunder on the table. That was awesome, dude. So speaking of which, Matt is with me tonight. How you doing, man? Hey, Mark, I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Are you doing all right, man? You yeah. Kind of like, I know you're not drinking, so it's kind of... It's kind of it's starting to get to him. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, it's not getting to me at all. Are you kidding? Uh, you're the man of iron. I mean, the iron will, you know, so you're the iron man. Another week left here, dry January as we record, so smooth yeah. sailing. You got smooth it. Smooth sailing. You got it covered, man. So we had a, but we had a big meal before we started the show tonight. Again, we ordered from Chewy's and all hung out. So I think we're all like full bellies drinking whiskey. And they were like, yeah, this is, this is relaxing. Got the fireplace going over there in the bourbon life studios. So we're all laid back, relaxed. So we got Philip hanging out as well. Philip, welcome back. It's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy. Hey, Hey, what's up? Stacy and I had a good time this weekend, didn't we? Uh, that sounds weird to say that. Yeah, that's yeah. not weird. Yeah. Yeah. But we got cut, the record. Cut that, cut, cut <laughs> that. <laughs> Wait, wasn't Chad a part of that too? <laughs> oh, oh, that, oh, that, that sounds even worse. That was for one night. <laughs> Stacy, Chad, and I. Yeah. Oh, that was just for one night. Oh, yeah. you anyway, anyway. Anyway. And Chad's here as well with us. I am. Yeah, yeah. I had, and then, I had a good time with you two on Friday. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, man, how was your weekend? <laughs> Jeez. Let's let's. I went to go see Marky Mark, and there was over two thousand people there. That's freaking yeah. crazy. So we got Big Mike calling in from down in Texas. What's going on in there, Big Chief? Oh, not much, man. Just sitting here. Uh, I actually did that in the patio out here because uh, it's, it's warm. Um, <laughs> I know you're up there freezing, and it's yeah, six sixty seven degrees here. Man, <laughs> it's thirty nine. Yeah, but we, hey, we didn't have any tornadoes today, so I'll. I'll take well, that one, and I'll I'll be you can, you can get that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll be happy with my cold weather and no tornadoes today. So, the, we were talking a little bit, kind of joking around there about our weekend, but we did. Stacy and Jed and I got to go out to Bourbon Con, out at the Marriott Griffin Gate. Uh, it's a brand new event, so this is the first year that they had done it. Uh, and it was Matt's idea, and unfortunately, Matt was not even able to to make it out with us uh, due to some family obligations. So, but he was. Uh, when was it, Matt? November or something? You're like, hey man, what's what's this bourbon con thing? Can maybe we should check it out and see if we can kind of get connected to him. So I'm like, all right, dude, I'm on it. <laughs> so I'm sending emails and messages on Instagram. Um, I got it set up. So we were we were an official partner uh, of the of the event, which was really cool. And then they actually bought a sponsorship. They sponsored the show for a month, um, which was a lot of fun. And we you know did some promos for them, but. We got some passes and we got to go out there this weekend. So um, Philip wasn't able to make it either. So it was uh, Stacy, Chad, and I on Friday. It's okay. We drank enough for both. Of you guys. <laughs> yeah. We we uh, <laughs> was Friday was was quite a Friday was quite a Matt. What are you doing over there, man? So you yeah, don't worry about me. All right. Settling in. Yeah, yeah he's just getting comfortable, man. So Friday. Let's talk about Friday. Um, what was your overall? Imp- well, let's talk about the overall impression of the event. What did you guys think? So I only got to see the one day. Um, upon getting there, it was kind of, I don't want to say controlled chaos, but it was, it was kind of chaotic you know, in, in a sense. Um, but as time went on, it kind of smoothed out. I, I don't, I'm not sure that they anticipated Friday. Friday. I don't think Friday was crazy busy. I heard Saturday was a lot busier, but I don't think they anticipated the people 
that yeah. amount of people being there Friday that they, I think they thought it'd be a lot more relaxed and laid back because the staff there kind of seemed overwhelmed and some of the distributor reps there who I've worked with, you know, through Total Wine were also kind of overwhelmed, but I had a good time. Um, <laughs> I mean, a, that's an understatement. Chad. Yeah, I mean, at, <laughs> we've got video <laughs> there. There's two videos. Um, <laughs> I didn't even make it through all the booths because, you know, I started out with Wilderness Trail, talked to Macaulay, um, talked to him for a while in Woodenville, and we went to O.H. Ingram. You know, I, there, I didn't even talk to anyone from like Castle and Key, um, Buffalo Trace, or any Four Roses, any of the big distilleries. I kept hitting the craft, and um, Lexton Brewing, me and that guy, you know, I kept talking to him. for Dave Bob. Oh, yeah. he was so nice. Dave he, Bob. He's a great dude, he's man. So he's so fun. He's a cool guy. shit, isn't he? I've, yeah. I've yeah. And, I mean, it – and that – I've not done that, you know, from a media perspective. I've gone, I think I went to the first, I think it was the first year of Bourbon on the Banks I went to, and I was only there for like an hour and a half. Uh, and that's that's it for Bourbon stuff for me. So yeah. it, it was just fun talking to people, taking some pictures um, with their high, horrible lighting. High quality pictures. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that, their lighting sucked. <laughs> the uh, lighting was terrible in but, the hall. Yeah, ISO cranked way up, a lot of noise, but it was fun. I mean, Chad and Sarah and... Um, we had Tyler from Louisville Bourbon Buzz. He came down and met us. So I mean, it, I, I had a blast. Yeah, it was it was a good time. Stacy, what do you what do you think? I second it. It was. I didn't have quite the chaos. I did get there a little bit later than you guys on Friday. Um, I feel like it was getting a little bit better at that point because, because the crowd was starting to die down a little bit. I think they were all starting to kind of level out and go to the different booths and disperse a little bit. Yeah. Um, VIP was. Off the hook. Off the train. Yeah, VIP. So to preface this, I'm talking to Macaulay, and he answers a phone call, and he's like, oh, shit. I'm like, what's up? Haley said there is pour your own Camp Kentucky and VIP on the seventh floor. And I'm like, hmm. I'm going to go find Chad and Sarah. <laughs> so I'm hanging out with Chad and Sarah, and then he's like, I'm going to go to VIP. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I got you. Like, they have pour your own Camp Kentucky. And he's like, what? On the seventh floor? And I was like, yeah, on the seventh floor. So we get up there. And I don't know if I should say this, but I mean, we just walk right in. No one check badges because they had media badges. I did not. I only got a silver for Friday. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, pour your own can of Kentucky. So, I mean, I went up, poured about an ounce for myself. One guy poured like six ounces. That's that kind of a, Mark, kind of, yeah. do you get any can of Kentucky? I did not get any. He did not because that one guy pulled a dick move and poured like six ounces. And, see, and I, I thought Chad was like BSing me because I didn't know that they I were legit have thought a, he was too. Because he sent that text. He's like, I'm on the seventh floor in VIP drinking King of Kentucky. I'm like, you're so full of it, man. Yeah, I'm and like, I was like, he's in someone's I'm room. Like, what? Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm like, wait a second. There really is a VIP on the seventh floor. So, yeah, by the time I made it up there, the KOK was gone, but I mean, they had some, they had the old Carter out there the, on Saturday. They had Elijah Craig 18 single barrel out old there. It's prime. They had, <laughs> they had Knob Creek 18 <laughs> later on on Saturday. That's right. As well. Knob Creek 18 was out there. Uh, they had the Mictor's 10 year rye mm-hmm. on Friday. And Mark and I were tearing that. Oh up. my God. Nobody else was drinking that. And I couldn't understand it, man. So every time I'd go back up there, it's like, Oop, I'm going to pour another ounce or so of the uh, Mictor's, Mictor's rye. But the, the facility and the, the, the hotel, the Marriott's Griffin Gate. Um, oh, it's great. It's a, it's a beautiful, hotel. yes, gorgeous hotel. It's great, uh, great environment out there. Uh, I think Friday when I walked in, I was shocked at how many people were there, or maybe it's just the venue, the way they had it set up, made it seem like there were a ton of people. Um, and it was later on Friday afternoon when I went out there, and I was just really surprised. I just, I thought, you know, Friday afternoon, there's not going to be that many people here. Yeah, there was quite a few. And what, there really was, yeah. Um, and then, you know, they had the VIP room set up. There wasn't a lot to do in the VIP, but it was still kind of nice to be able to, cause they had couches and chairs and they had the, they had some different food up there. You know, you the could pour eat, your own, pour your own was worth yeah. You know, that's had a, yeah. had a spirit ice vice up there, which I still didn't get to use. <laughs> I'm so sorry about you tried. that. Uh, but then they had seminars too. So they had people talking like Freddie Johnson from Buffalo mm-hmm. Trace, Pat Heiss was out there talking. We recorded a podcast. Stacy and I recorded a podcast, mm-hmm. uh, with Wally Dant. That's going to come out next month. Um, so we recorded that. They had Jeffrey Zakarian from the is he Food Network, mm-hmm. I think, or Food yeah. Channel. Um, so he did a live demonstration out there. I mean, they had a lot of cool things going on, uh, and I think they can only go up from here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, and they yeah. Had, I mean, I think they they tighten a few screws um, yeah. and kind of figure out because this isn't a dig at them. I just couldn't. To me, as a consumer, the pricing scale. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Um, which I have no room to complain about that, but I just like. As someone from the outside looking in, I think that would need some refinement. But yeah, it. I think overall success. I hope they feel that way because I mean, everyone that we've talked to who went, 
had, had, a, had a good time. time. Everybody, I, I have not heard, you know, little comments like the dinner, things were rushed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, first time they did it, it was an interactive dinner, but mm -hmm. you know, they had the mics turned up way loud. The music was really, was really, really loud. loud. Uh, so there were some elements, yeah, they can tweak it and they'll make it better. But overall, I was really impressed with the, with the team. Uh, and so thank you, Matt, <laughs> even though you didn't get to go, dude. Uh, thanks for suggesting that because, you know, we got to be an official partner and I'm sure next year, I think they were pleased. Um, cause I talked to the guy, the, the general manager out there, saw him several times and talked to him and he was very appreciative of our, uh, you know, being out there and that we were posting stuff and we had worked with them. So yeah, I think this could be a long-term partnership. I'd also like to see some more craft distilleries out there yeah next year for sure and i i do know that that was something that a lot of craft distilleries weren't approached about it and it's probably their you know because it was their first year sure I, I don't know what the staff's you know involvement with the whiskey and bourbon industry is currently but maybe they can learn a little bit more i think about they it. went with like well-known right craft, you know the, the safe options yeah yeah that that's that's true so real quick guys let's talk about what we poured up because we were going to do Tad was going to do his little like Pepsi taste challenge thing. And then we talked about doing our favorite pours from 2022. So I, I grabbed a bottle that was one of my favorite pours from last year. It's the William Heaven Hill, the 15 year old, um, from Heaven Hill distillery, of course, 109 proof. Um, man, this was, this one just blew my socks off last year. Well, well, yeah, cause it was last year when I got it, right? Like three weeks ago. Yeah. I was gonna say last year, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, a buddy of mine who is from Bardstown just happened to be down there, took his mom to the doctor that day. <laughs> and he just happened to stop by the distillery and he sent me a text and he was like, Hey man, is this stuff any good? And he had no idea. Oh my gosh. And I was like, yes. And if your wife is there with you, please have her buy a bottle and I'll, I'll pay for it. Um, but I mean, I think it was like two ninety. So, you know, talking about again, we talked about Mike's drinking that, that two forty nine eight year old Willet. And this is a 15 year old, $290, uh, heaven hill. But uh, I love I love this one, Mike. I'm sorry I didn't get you a sample out, man. But uh, it's all but, right. He's got one rolling around in the bed of the truck. He's right got, now. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got. I'm actually drinking on a Hardens Creek. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, hell yeah. yeah, yeah, man. That's good. So, so in there, Matt. Do you not? You don't have a man. Okay, Stacy. What do you get in terms of the nose? Well, whenever you first uh, opened this up and poured myself. I was getting a lot of floral notes uh -huh. initially. Now that has kind of died down. I'm getting some like baking spices. There's like an underlying sweetness there, but I don't want to say it's like vanilla or cream or anything like that. I just can't quite put my nose on. Gotcha. No pun Kept intended. I can't nose. quite put my nose on what I'm nosing here. Gotcha. Also, I've been talking too much. I just need to go back and sniff some more. What about you, Chad? Uh, I, the... So I get a little bit of that florality that she's talking about, like some tea and honey. Uh, I'd get a very strong, and I mean, it's strong, like vanilla, buttercream, rich with a little bit of nuttiness in there and uh, some clove. It, it's got a light tobacco, like a musty tobacco oak note. I mean, it's 15 years old, so hopefully it's got a little bit of that mustiness to it. A really good nose. It's a lot different than the last time I remember having it because last time I, I remember it being like very like peanut forward and, yeah. and like – a little more bitter, like, you know, stringent on the nose. It's a lot, it's very much softened up, which I mean, you know, when you go through two thirds of it, it should. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. You get, you get the neck pour. That's what it was, man. Yeah. So what are you, Philip? What do you think, man? So I, I get a lot of those peanutty notes, Yeah. but it's a, like, to me, this is like classic heaven heel. Yeah. And, and then I do, I actually get a little bit of a citrus, that sweetness that they're talking about. To me, it's coming across as like a lemony citrusy gotcha. type smell that makes sense so i'm getting the nut i'm getting is like a hazelnutty like ferrero rocher yeah notes on it yeah the sweetness almost the chocolatey mm -hmm. aroma that goes with that as well can you say so, that again i've never heard anyone actually say that correctly ferrero well rocher. who's to say that i'm saying it correctly <laughs> it's, it's the cleanest i've ever heard of ferrero it. rocher <laughs> so let's talk about let's go back and talk about festivals and events and hold things. on oh you can ask Mike what his his Harden's Creek how it, how it smells. Uh, yeah, good. There you go, Mike. Jump in and <laughs> share with us what you're what you're drinking and what you're picking up on that one. Good job, Chad. Sorry so, about that. So this is the Jacobs Well, sixteen year old. Uh, you know, um, this is another bottle where somehow. Uh, hey, Mike. I think we're losing you, man. Unfortunately. Uh, hold on. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, we got you now. Pull the oh. antenna out. <laughs> yeah, it's got to yeah. pull, got to yeah, pull yeah. the antenna on this track phone. There you go. Too many people one time is what I'm doing. Um, 
you know, this is the Jacobs Well right here, 16 year old uh, um, from Freddie. Um, you know, this right here to me is some of the best juice come, that has come out of Jim Beam. You know, that's and that's there's a lot of great juice that comes out of there. Yeah, um, I agree. But for somehow, some way, I ended up with like four bottles of this. Son of a bitch. Are you serious, dude? Uh, so you can send us some samples. Um, <laughs> if you're looking I, to get I rid of one, I'll take three of those off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> a bottle came in the mail with a bird uh, um, from a dinner I went to at Jim Beam. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Mark, you got to go to the same dinner. Uh, that, no, that was, I, I wasn't there. I didn't get to go to that. I went to that opening or that when they reopened the distillery, I, but I didn't make it to that dinner, unfortunately. Oh, I thought you got to go to that. No, they don't. They don't too. like me as much as they like you, man. The no, you <laughs> well, clearly you, not. You're no, not getting. I'm telling you, man. Mail. Big, clearly, big, that's why you're now hey, on the podcast. Yeah, I was gonna say, Big Chief, you're big, you're our in. Big yeah, chief. I've been trying to kiss a mass of Jim Beam for a while. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. He, <laughs> this guy, Big Chief, ha, he is in with Fred and Freddie, man, because they love every time. Anytime I see, yeah, I mean, they're like talking and, and like giving big hugs and, and you shaking hands, and it's like, dang, man. So yeah, Big Chief's in. He's in pretty tight with the nose. I like go on a dance, you know. You introduce yourself, like, "Hey, it's nice to meet you. Have you seen Chief?" Yeah. Where's Big Chief? Aren't you a podcaster? Yeah. Where's our buddy? But so you yeah. Have well, it, hey, it, bourbon's bourbon. It, it, those guys are as down to earth as people as you can get. Yeah. Uh, if listeners, if you haven't met Fred and Freddie, they salt of earth. Uh, and they really just want to talk about sometimes just about their families and talk about soccer and uh, just about life. And, you know, I've had conversations with both of them about that kind of stuff and just about cooking. And, you know, I'm there to drink whiskey and, and whiskey. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, if you've met me, you know that I'm there to uh, meet you and get to know you as a person and, uh, I think that goes a long ways. If you're thinking about doing a podcast, you're thinking about doing some kind of social media with whiskey, uh, just be there to get through. You get to know them people. You know, some of my best friends now are from whiskey. Um, you know, yeah. somebody said hey, Haley. and uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, man, Haley, Haley and Macaulay. This, yeah. yeah, Macaulay, they're just two great people that you, you ever get to sit down and, and just – talk to them uh they'll just light your day up and um you know i've seen Haley just be struggling after a festival just worn out and uh but she's still smiling yeah um, yeah. i so agree man i hate to put up get on my soapbox there and say hey take advantage, <laughs> of, take advantage of people but there's people out there that are just there to get free whiskey and that's not what it's about it's about the camaraderie the love of whiskey is yeah. what it's all about. So, oh uh, yeah, and this this hard creek is that's Freddie's baby. Um, he was trying to bring something back, and they they tried this before. You know, this isn't the first time. Oh, they that's went right. Down this road. Yeah, that's right. This, um, so it failed before. I don't think it's going to fail this time. I think that there was two expressions that I liked the the Colonel. I really didn't like that. The two year old. Um, yeah. Now, Matt, you actually Maybe. liked that one, didn't you? I, I mean, did. that was, you liked that one. Matt, actually, I thought it was I good as well. I just think I it like needs it. a cheaper price point. I yeah, it, the mm-hmm. price point's crazy on the two-year-old, but Matt liked it almost, I think, as much or more than the... Yeah, for what it was, I actually liked it better than the 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Burn him. I, I would rather drink mellow corn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's, that's me. Uh, you, know, um, you know, it's not about the price point either to me, but... Um, I paid for some of my bottles, um, but um, I, I still love it. It's a good bourbon. So yeah. talking about festivals, um, you know, me and Mark were talking about the whiskey trip and how we were going to set it up and uh, going to some festivals that maybe you guys can to that I can get to. Uh, me and my wife are looking forward to going to the New Orleans Bourbon Festival coming up. Oh, I've um, always wanted to go to that. I'm super excited about it. My wife's so excited about it. She's already got our reservation and stuff, and she's like, "You better tell Mark we're we're going." <laughs> so uh, I was like, "Okay, okay, just calm down." <laughs> oh no, that's but, awesome. Uh, I love festivals uh, to see excitement on people's faces uh, when they get to drink whiskey and sip whiskey, and um, it's just I love it. I yeah. love the atmosphere, and 
um, some people get to drink whiskey they've never had before. Um, like being in Kentucky, I mean, uh, keep throwing um, salt in the wind. Yeah, guys. no Come doubt, on. man. Yeah, and some of us still have never had the opportunity to drink King of Kentucky. Hey, remember whenever you had the chance hey. to buy a bottle and you bought birthday bourbon? <laughs> I bought birthday bourbon instead. Yeah, I remember that story. Big that mistake. Sucks. Big mistake. Speaking of Kentucky, there's a bottle of that back there. Pick up right now. No, that's not open. Oh, but, all right. So look at me. I'm big chief driving around King, Kentucky. <laughs> Man, I hope nobody from Texas is listening. They're going to find your damn truck and you're going to be like 10 cases light. They're like one bedroom <laughs> cabin huh? in te- South Oh, Texas. that's right, man. So let's, okay, I'm, guys, let's talk. Matt, let's, what about festivals, man? What's the, what's your favorite part? Do you have a favorite part of going to these events and things? I think my favorite part, uh, it kind of echoes a lot about what big chief says is just getting to talk and see all the people that uh, are involved with these and when they let their guard down. And I don't mean that in, in like a bad way, but like when they're not playing to the fans, they're not playing to the audience. They're Having not, to put on that smile. Yeah, they're not, they're not promoting when they're just being real and everybody's just being real and you catch them for like that momentary exhale when you just get to walk up to someone who's been working a crowd all day and you just get to say like, hey, you know, you've been running much lately you're like you know what's been going on how you been yeah and you just get to get those a minute two minute five minutes whatever just to connect over something and just completely see people at themselves and a lot of times that is who people people represent their product really well and they bring themselves to it but when people let their guard down and you just get to be real about it. I think that's my favorite part about festivals is yeah. just seeing everybody that way. I think that's really cool. Philip, what about you? Yeah, I second that. And, you know, I was working at the Bourbon on the Banks Festival and dealing with, you know, the average, you know, customers coming through and then towards the end of the day, they start getting drunk. And it's just like, <laughs> I want to go home. And then like Stacy stopped by the booth. And I'm like, thank God. I'm like, I'm going over here for a minute <laughs> just to <laughs> get away from this. So it's, it's definitely nice. Like, like Matt said, to to just meet up with the people you know, yeah. or you know, even get to know some people and just sit there right. and just chill out and relax, and and it's also cool to meet people that you know has been messaging you on Instagram or yeah, you know, and you yeah. see them finally in person, and so you get to connect that, actual face to face instead of through a phone. I agree with that for sure. Stacy, what about you? Gonna echo that also. Uh, just I, be, being real, yeah. because also, I mean, it's just second nature to. I mean, I think we're all pretty genuine people and I really wasn't surprised at any of you Matt not looking at you because you don't have social media but I wasn't surprised to meet any of you and like oh that's not the person that I thought was you know behind the keyboard there but like that's been my favorite part about meeting people but it's also been a disappointing part about meeting some people because they're not all that are always cracked up to be yeah so I think that just the fellowship aspect of it like all coming together for a common interest i think is really cool yeah chad what about you man i've not done too many whiskey festivals uh but as someone who did grow up as a teenage punk rocker who went to a lot of music festivals uh a lot of a lot of similarities there i mean you know back in that day it was myspace so yeah uh, there you go tom gave you tom gave you everything you needed man he did man he's my first friend and my only friend for a while but uh kicked him to the curb like everybody else he was always number one on my top for facebook Uh, bam uh, but it just the similarities there. I mean, it, it, I can talk to the wall. I can make friends with anybody. Like it's, if, if you and I don't get along, then it's your problem, not mine. But uh, <laughs> there you go, man. I mean, seriously. Wow. Okay. So, but I mean, it's like just running into people and talking to them. But at, you know, here at BermanCon, there wasn't too many people I didn't know, except maybe some of the vendors who were either just like you know hired talent or someone um, like the the guy from OH Ingram. I'd never seen him on any like social media promoting anything at all. Yeah. And it was only like his third festival or something. I can't remember what he said. Yeah. But it's only like his third time doing like promo stuff. And he was just pretty much out there like, this is my shit. It's the best shit in the world. And we tried it. And we're like, that's pretty damn good. It was, <laughs> oh, it was really good. We've had him on the show. Not him, um, but we had their their founder. And I'm drawing a blank on his name. Hank. Hank. Thank you. Uh, we had him on the show and we I enjoyed their stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just the, just the confidence level of that. And uh, I mean, hell, what was his name from Alta or not Alta? Like Dave Bob. Bob. Yeah, Dave oh Bob. Oh my gosh! Dave like Bob he, he seriously, uh, he to me seemed like the kind of guy that unless you carried on the conversation with him, he would have just stayed back and not said anything. But I love people like that, like him. Like I thought he was freaking hilarious. I did too. And, and uh, he, you know, he sat with us at the table after 
after the festival for a little bit. And, uh, I mean, just meeting people like that who, you know, they, they need to find their crowd to kind of come out of their shell. And, and it, mm-hmm. if you go into something, you're kind of sheltered and you, you don't say much and you go in, you're not going to have fun. So, I mean, you, you got to bring out the best of people. And sometimes I think that especially people working there, it's what they need. Sure. Yeah. Cause they're, they're telling the same story a hundred times over. They're answering the same questions a thousand times over. And if you go in there asking those same questions, it's yeah. just going to be redundant. So I yeah. just kind of went in with the mindset of I'm going to have fun with everybody. Yeah. I think we accomplished that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we so, did. So let's talk about this William Heaven Hill real quick. Uh, talk about the the palette and the finish on it. What do you guys, what do you guys get on it? Who wants to go? Why finish? don't you start? Yeah. Why don't I start? Yeah. This is I your just, bottle. It is. You know, to me, it's like, it's just like brown sugar. It's, uh, you know, the nuttiness still comes through as well. 15 years, 109 proof. It's so easy to drink though. I mean, goodness. Well, that's why there's not much left in this bottle. Well, I mean, I, see. I try to pace myself with it, but this, honestly, from last year, this is one of my favorite bottles. No question about it. So, Stacy, what about you, since you put me on the spot? I really don't see what the hype is. I'm kidding. No, this is... Wow. This is <laughs> I was going to go, wow. The look on your what? face. Wow. I think I just saw your soul leave you your did. body. It just, yeah. Just um, a second. Kidding. This is actually really good. I've been disappointed with some other Heaven Hill products in the past. Um, not only for the, just, there was a lot of hype behind it and I really wasn't, you know, feeling it, but this, this is fantastic. Um, getting a lot of dessert notes on it. Yeah. Brown sugar bomb for sure. And getting like some like dark cherry and like chocolate vibes to it. But yeah. this is really good. Nice. Chad, what about you, man? It's funny that, uh, big chiefs drinking that Hardin's Creek. So I, I, this has a lot of beam quality to it. It's got a little bit of that bitter oak, that brown sugar, uh, some chocolate and leather. But it does have a slightly sweet uh, sweet component to it with the vanilla and the butterscotch and toffee. It, I mean, quintessential Heaven Hill, 109 proof, it's easy to drink. I'm surprised you like it because it does have some tannins to it. I do think it's a little bit drying. Um, you get a little bit of dried fruit, like cherry, or like dried cherry, but um, no, I, I enjoy it. I mean, I always talk about price point, and I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's I don't know, it'd, it'd be a toss up for me, but. but if someone offered me the bottle for that price, I'd probably take it. I'd yep. take it too. Yep. Philip, what do you think? For me, it's a home run. It's yeah. like the uh the white label Heaven Hill that oh. got discontinued. It's that on like but steroids. Grown. Like that's yeah. on trend. And yeah. which that was one of my favorite all times. So this is just yeah proofed up the age. It is yeah, it's right in my wheelhouse. It's actually in my top five list of the year. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Chief, what about your uh your Hardens Creek down there, man? What do you what do you get on that when you're tasting it? And it's everything that a uh, uh, ultra age bourbon I think should be. It's got that burnt caramel on it, leather, tobacco. The oak's not gonna take you. Uh, a little bit of bitterness, like black walnut on it. Uh, I like that. Uh, yeah, it, it, it finishes well. Um, it is a little pricey. Um, it's not that price ain't for everybody, but you know, it's um, good. You kind of got a little. You got to got a little bit of that price. If you want to drink big boy bourbon. Yeah, you know, hey, 90 is <laughs> the new 50 anyway, man. So right. everybody needs to get adjusted to that, right? <laughs> we need that yeah, on a yeah. T-shirt. We do. All right, guys. Think, oh, go ahead. 150. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just I was going to say we're at the end of round two, but go ahead and say what you're going to finish up there, Mike. $150 bottle. This ain't bad, you know. Yeah. Um, I would probably love to be drinking what you was drinking. Uh, you know, Heaven Hill's got some great whiskey out there. I was actually wondering what – uh, bourbon Stacy doesn't like from there. We can talk about that off air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that I didn't, I didn't like it. It was just, I was underwhelmed. How's that? I got you. That uh, makes sense. Yeah. There's, there's some bourbons out there like that. Everybody's like, Ooh, God. And I'm like from, from Jim Bean, like old tub. I'm just like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I like, oh, Chad's like, them. that's fighting words. Them, them, them fighting words, boy. I'll tell you what, guys, let's take a quick break because we're, we're running, kind of running over on round two. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back. You guys can throw down on the old tub in the third round if that'll work. So let's get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back in just a minute with more with the uh, Bourbon Life crew in just a minute. The Stave Restaurant is a bourbon lover's paradise right here in the heart of bourbon country. Located at 5711 McCracken Pike in Millville, Kentucky, between Castle and Key and Woodford Reserve, Chef Kyle Klatka prepares amazing food each day that features an elevated Kentucky-inspired cuisine. With a full-service bar, great bourbon flights, and signature cocktails, 
The Stave is the perfect place to catch up with friends after a fun-filled day of touring the local distilleries. Be sure to check them out online at thestavekentucky.com or at Instagram and Facebook at The Stave Kentucky. All right, everybody, welcome back for the third and final round of the Bourbon Life podcast. I'm your host, Mark, and with me tonight live in the Bourbon Life studios is my good friends, Chad. Yeah, okay, Stacy. Hello. <laughs> Matt. Hey, Mark. What's up, man? Not much. Uh, Philip. Check me out on Instagram at Bourbon Hunt. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the newest crew member, our good friend, Big Chief, calling in for Texas. How you doing down there, man? Doing good, man. Awesome. My third pour here of uh, <laughs> delicious uh, pickup bed bourbon. Pick up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that is that is a a whiskey brand. If I've heard one, yeah, there you go. Pick up bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds great. Man. That's going to be like the new Jefferson's expression, right? <laughs> pick up truck. Yeah, we toured around. Like, well, it's kind of like Brad Paisley, right? Because he's got the American Highway. Yeah, he's got it. He's yeah. got it on the tour uh, bus. Semi, or semi truck, yeah. right? Yeah, we just put it in the back of a of a of a Mike's truck. We'll make our own. The Bourbon Life just, just ride around with it. <laughs> that w- that'd work, man. Yeah, go out and sure. do some whomping around there. Yeah, that'd be good down there in the Bayou, man. Check, wrestling, here, we can it, ra- wrestle alligators. It, it's flat down here. It is not Kentucky. My wife keeps reminding me. That she's like, Kentucky is beautiful. It's flat down here. They can see your neighbors in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see my neighbors. But I've heard that the stars at night oh, are <laughs> big and bright. Yeah, deep in the heart of te- anyway. So yeah. <laughs> this round, we got something that Chad brought for us to drink, and uh, Mike, we'll check in with you in a second on what you've got poured up, but. Chad, what'd you bring us, man? What'd you bring for Matt that Matt's not drinking tonight? Marcus, I brought <laughs> Old Forester Single Barrel Rye wow. Barrel Strength. That was so nice of you to bring. Yeah, that. and I brought this for Matt. Not thinking, you know, I mean. <laughs> it's dry January. It's dry January. <laughs> Honestly, I just, it's, it's not something uh, that just crosses my mind. Yeah. But uh, at 132.9 proof from Warehouse K, Floor 7. This has a mash bill, Mark, since you asked me. Of 65 rye, 20 malted barley, and 15 corn. Oh, okay. Huh. Huh. That's interesting. That's mm. a high malted barley content. It is it a high is. malted barley content. 20%. I was surprised to hear that. I was too. But I feel like it kind of rings through on the nose whenever we get to that point. But When we get to that point, mm-hmm. well, you know, hey, since we're we're there, Chad. Sounds like you're at that bottom. point. Okay. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you pick up on that? Nose? I do feel like there is a good bit of uh, of sweetness on the nose. Kind of, It's a little, little biscuity. Um Toasted bread, it's, which is kind of weird, I think, for a rye whiskey to yeah. get those underlying notes. A lot of chocolate, coffee, which I, I feel like has to be from the malted barley. Um, I mean, it is deep. It's dark. It's rich. Uh, 133 proof, basically. So there's a good punch of ethanol. Nice cinnamon, red hot, tobacco. I think with some water, this would really open up. Uh, I wish I, well, you know. I, I was going to say, you've only got like only a gallon. Got a half gallon. You've got a gallon of water there. Oh. oh, and you just poured half of that. Oh, time to bounce that shit out. Jeez. Wow. Anyway, Philip, what do you get so on the nose me, while Chad's over here? I would have, like, if I didn't know, if someone just poured this blind, I would be like, oh, this is a high rye bourbon. I would not expect it yeah. to be a rye. I got you. Just a straight rye. Yeah. Uh, but it's very good. It's sweet on the nose. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't get those typical minty, grassy notes that you do on a on a high rye. I'm getting a hint just just a ever so slight hint of like that grassiness like lemongrass is like hidden underneath there but there's more definitely more sweet and like fruity notes to this one for sure i mean there's a nice punch coming through on the nose man there's no question about that though uh which i like 132 proof wow that's that's nice but 20 percent malted barley i think you're right chad i think that does come through man there's a little bit of that you're talking about the the color on this is gorgeous yeah the color on it is is absolutely amazing so Matt, you oh Matt, Matt oh. broke down. Look at him, man. He broke down. He's sniffing it. At Don't least. lie to the audience. He's just he, sniffing it. Well, he's not drinking well, it. Well, he said he he wasn't even going to sniff it, but he no, is. He sniffed. He sniffed some earlier. Oh, that's see right. to me that that does sniff like a rye, not an Indiana uh-huh. certainly, but yeah. it's got nice sweetness. I do pick up some mint, a little bit of herbs coming across. Okay. It's got like a savory mint backed up by some sweetness as well, um, almost like a touch of some sort of like a minerality on the nose, like an earthy kind of minerality. Like you often say, Mark, like a black tea, yeah, like a tea leaf. But to me, there's like a, like some sort of a sweet herbal tea leaf with it as well. 
almost gotcha. like a licorice tea. Yeah, I can see that. Or, yeah, yeah, licorice, sassafrasy kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice, oh. really nice nose. Almost like pencil shavings. It is not almost like pencil shavings. <laughs> so well, I know what you mean when you say that. I know <laughs> that old hand crank sharpener. You got that right, man. Mike, I know exactly. Mike, what what are you what are you sipping on, man? I got a bottle of the Master's Keep uh, Decades, uh, 104 proof. It's Kentucky straight bourbon. It was a blend of 10 to 20 year old bourbons nice. uh, together by the master himself, Jimmy Russell, and his son Eddie. Um, it doesn't get much better than this pour right here. Um, it, yeah, it's ever that a bourbon should be out of Kentucky. It's the best master's keep. Is it, Chad? Yeah, like it, of all the ones I've had them all, I'm missing like three of them. But it, as far as everyone that I've tried, that master's keep decades is the real deal. So, guys, we were talking earlier. I had that Heaven Hill 15 that we tried. It was one of my favorites from last year. So, we're talking about favorite bourbons or favorite rise from 2022. Matt, I think you may have prepared a list or at he's, least have he's the only one. An, an idea. No, no Philip? No, Philip did, Philip did as well. Yeah. Philip did his homework. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to. This is our first crew episode of 2023, season number four. So, I thought it would be fun to go back through some of what we had on our oh, show yeah. at least uh for me this is going to be stuff that we've sampled on our show i don't know if everybody else is going to go off the show as well um but this is the, some of my favorites oh, if i have my way everybody's going off the show <laughs> oh no cool <laughs> i'm just kidding go ahead, wow everybody's gonna love your tasting <laughs> notes right, so, yeah. welcome to caramel and vanilla hour with mark <laughs> Oh, wow. Smooth. With a little bit of leather and pencil shaving. Hey, look, if it's, yeah. good enough for, if it's good enough for Denny Potter, it's good enough for me. All right. True, vanilla, true story. vanilla and caramel. That's it. That's all you're getting. Go ahead, Matt. Stop so it. these were just, <laughs> um, just some of the things that really stuck out to me on all the things that we sampled this year. Um, one of our earliest shows was with ASW Distilling down in Atlanta. Uh-huh. And their Georgia Hartwood, the Fiddler, oh yeah, really mm. stuck out for me. Um, that was that was super early on, but that's right. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. That was a uh, Justin Manglitz, right, uh-huh. Master Distiller. Yep, they yep. just did an Amberana Fiddler. Ooh, Ooh. I know. Lord of Mercy, nice. Ooh. That was a a great one. Then um, we go back to Chicken Cock, the Island Rooster. Yeah, right that over. rye, yeah, sitting right over there. But I thought that was absolutely delicious. I still haven't had that one. Oh, it's so lovely. A beautiful Kentucky rye finished in rum barrels. We'll remedy that after the, yeah, yeah. after we stop that. recording. We're going to fix that, we Stacey. We're going to fix it. And then two of the ones that stuck out for me are actually pretty approachable in price and quite available as well. Um, but in terms of like surprising and absolutely crushable, the EJ Curly Small Batch. Yes. Uh, yeah, that. So I got my first bottle of that like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe. Is it already almost gone? I drank a pass that freaking bottle <laughs> in, in one day. At the, I, I felt it later. I was like, holy shit. I have, but, I have that one on my list too. But oh, yeah, no, Curly's on mine. Yeah. And, and for me, it's excellent. And I was just really surprised. That is like a $55 yeah. bottle, 95 that, proof readily available on the shelves usually small batch carries such a negative connotation especially when it's released right next to single barrels which are also really really good but oh, yeah i thought the small batch punched way above its price point i and agree i absolutely loved it and another one uh kind of in the same vein would be the uh rd1 French oak, oak yeah. finish <laughs> yeah that's really- another one in the mid 50 dollar range 101 proof that just drank so silky and flavorful and comparing it to their regular bourbon offering, which same thing, this is just the French oak finish with a couple extra proof points. It was a completely different product and it just, it packed so much flavor. It was so delicious and just really complete. Drank really well from nose to palate to finish at an approachable price point. To me, that was uh, that was a resounding hit for the year. Yeah, nice man, good list, Matt. See, Matt did his homework, and now I feel like beautiful. It, it was. Great Phil, list. you did your homework too, man. So you might as well give us your list. So mine's as well, man. not going to be near as detailed. As detailed as Matt's, yeah. The silkiness, I can't. 
handle. <laughs> so he's, he's more uh, of a velour kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So these aren't in any particular order. This is just the, my top five that I come up with. Uh, so the Nelson Brothers 15 year ride, that was a fantastic. Yeah. Um, I oh. really that one really stuck with me. Um, yeah. And then of course the William Heaven Hill 15 year. Those are those are the two on my list. I mean, so, I'm just telling you, both of those are on my best. Um, and then the uh, Old Clifty Apple Brandy from Spirits of French Lake. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 100 proof, bottled in bond. I think it's around $50, or something like that. But if you're getting into brandies or anything like that, yeah, start there because it's like adult apple juice. It is so good. <clears throat> um, the rare character rye that chad brought that had the, my list the rainbow fred minnick on the label <laughs> oh, yeah. he was right at unicorn Crabber's liquor <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, killer so oh, that yeah. one was fantastic and then of course the pappy 15 at the liquor barn release Aww. for my oh, yeah. my first time tasting the 15 that that bottle was fantastic that's cute awesome it's cute <laughs> oh, wow man a lot of 15 year olds in yeah, your list yeah. man yeah three. oh let's not no. let's not what 15 never no, oh, jeez. See, not I don't legal. even. Oh, wow. What about you, Big Chief, man? I know we didn't we didn't talk about it, but what would you uh, say? Do everything you have some, that's in the bed of his truck. Yeah, all of, <laughs> uh, the, the ten cases are my are my favorite whiskeys from twenty twenty two. He's got about two hundred fifty thousand dollars insurance car <laughs> policy on the bed of his truck right now. We were going to talk about the other ten cases, then the other sixty cases that are in somebody's garage right now. Jeez, <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, how, many bottles, move all to a cl- how many bottles you said you had like 800 bottles or something like that i think we brought a little over 50 bottles down to texas with us uh, what the yeah. hell and you get i mean I, I think i have a lot of bottles around here but then no not even close i think you'd be surprised when you start counting trust me i, I when I, once i counted mine i was like <laughs> yeah yeah i got you that's why i never put shelves up so nobody really knows how many bottles i have right so so what you yeah. got what you got big chief oh um, that jacob's well was one of my Top ones of the year, uh, Devil's River out of San Antonio, Texas, had this distiller select. Um, it was only a two-year-old. Huh. And it was a Texas bourbon, and it was, I don't know what the hell they were. Um, magical. Um, dueling around out of southern Kentucky, they were on that tennis border. They had some Lincoln Pinch. It was a four-year-old weeder. out of Bond. Um, it was it was spectacular. I, I really loved it uh, for what it was. We saw that. Uh, I, I was super impressed. Batch one and batch two of the women from Castle and Key. Um, man, they they okay. blew me away with those two right there. Gotcha. Uh, just it was. I, I was like was one of my first people to get to try those. And, um, it was, that was a special experience, but I loved them. Uh, Leopold Brothers Chamber Rye. Um, okay. Totally different, unexpected. A lot of people say they didn't like it. It wasn't for them, but, um, you know, that that's a pretty damn good bottle of whiskey. Um, and it's got so much history and whiskey uh you know if you haven't checked it out that, that's got a high price tag we didn't buy that bottle we only had about a third of the bottle left when we drank it uh uh it was really good though and yeah. then an old elk of a wheat no surprise right there for me wow um, surprise yeah yeah surprise surprise my wheat uh, uh really that one was uh, blew my doors off um I drank that down at the Southern Whiskey Society, cracked it open and shared it with a bunch of people. And everybody was like, where's that? Where's that from? And I started showing them and tell them and uh, everybody was surprised. So that's kind of my list. But the top two were that distiller select and, and, uh, and the uh, Jake Wheel, though. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Very nice, man. Good, good list. Stacy, what about you? Cause we didn't do our homework, but that's you know. okay. I prepared a list. You, wow. You a did that quickly. A lot of things were popping in my head. So I'm going to butcher the name of this first one, but the Chateau de la, de la, Chateau de la bleu, 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 whatever from, <laughs> <laughs> from Bardstown bourbon company, their, the 2.0 version. I thought that that was killer. They did a great job on that. Um, Another one that I really enjoyed was uh, the Penelope Takai finish. Okay. Uh, that was a 95.5 rye finished in an, uh, 
um, Hungarian wine cast. Yeah, I almost said Bavarian. <laughs> Hungarian uh, wine cast. That one was great. Um, Chad was nice enough to share a couple of these on my list with us. Uh, that Stellum Fibonacci rye was fantastic. Probably my favorite rye of the year. Aside from what we're drinking right now, this one's really good too. Um, one of the most interesting things I had this year... Um, I got into single malts a little bit this year. So Brickway Distillery out of Omaha, Nebraska has a five-year single malt that I got a sample of from a friend, and that just absolutely blew me away. So if you have the opportunity to get your hands on one of those, do it. Um, I don't know how available do they it. are, but do I still don't do have it. a bottle. Do it. Um, and then there was that rare character rye with the – the Fred Minnick on, riding on a <laughs> riding on a unicorn. That one was really good. And the last one that absolutely blew me away, and I know I'll never have a bottle of it, but I had gone and tried an Old Forester bottled in bond from 1960. No, with Caroline, um, nice. the whiskey historian, and that was the most beautiful. Caroline, Caroline it was the most beautiful bottle of bourbon I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, it was great. Very nice. Those dusties are something else. Chad, what about you, man? You got a list. Uh, so I was actually, I was watching like the clips I had made from the video recorded of the 18 bottles. I couldn't break it down, but uh, as a big surprise to me this year was Frank August. I think Frank August really, that the, I'm one of the people who like, don't buy a pretty bottle cause that's stupid. Oh, but that bottle was, mm. the bottle's gorgeous. It's, un, I mean, it's just so understated. The, the liquid inside is phenomenal and I've not got a chance to try cause we haven't, re we actually, once they blew up, we have not received it in like four months huh. so we had it for a couple months and it, they got super popular like overnight can't get any product from them but uh they damn good green river um green river five year i think that is just it is the best 35 dollar bottle of whiskey you can buy and i can't i can't recommend anything that's that's better for the value um barstown bourbon founders that as far as a beer finished bourbon because usually those can go really good or really bad there's no in between that was exceptional from them uh ej curly both the small batch and single barrel the rare character stuff i, got, I mean this was the year of rare character for me i got introduced to pablo he reached out to me so thank you for that uh him and rare character and fortuna mm -hmm. um pr probably one and i hate to say it just because he put his video out today as of um uh, what is today? Tuesday the 24th, and this will come out on Friday or a Friday if it's not this Friday. Uh, Booker's Kentucky Tea Batch is the best Booker's I've had since 2018. Yeah. And I think it's really showcasing the blending of what Jim Beam is doing with Booker's. I feel like for the last few years, it's kind of just gone by the wayside as they've kind of just put batches out just to put batches out. And this one was exceptional. Um, but it, I don't know that I could pick an all-time favorite. But I will say that Stellum, Stellum Fibonacci rye is seriously the best rye, one of the best rye whiskeys I've ever had. Um, and only because I got to try a little sample of it, that Four Roses 20 year was pretty damn good. I'm not the king of Kentucky. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It was all right. You know, I didn't make a list, but I mean, I agree with Philip that this, this William Hill, Heaven Hill 15, I mean, that's why I brought it down because that was one of my favorites from last year, and it still is. That 15 year Nelson Brothers Rye. Oh, yeah. yeah I, mean, I forgot that one. I forgot that one. On that, that one, too. Yeah. That, yeah. I that. mean, that was, Matt, what do you think about that one? That was, yeah, that was pretty exceptional. Yeah. I was just really thrilled with that. You know, and I mean, you bring a good point up on that Booker's. I mean, because I'm a huge Booker's fan. Yeah. That T Batch, I mean, that was, that was it, definitely. It, 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 it seriously, it, it blew me away. Uh, Chad from Spurbonite, let me try that. Uh, I was trying a couple different bookers. He brought me booker. You know, I got to try bookers. 30th, bookers dry. And he's like, I've got the new tea batch. I'm like, I haven't had the new tea batch. Yeah. Try the new tea batch. And I was like, holy shit. I'm like, yeah, really good stuff. It's, uh, it's exceptional. Yeah. And I will tell you that I'm a double, double oaked fan. So I'm always, I mean, that's always going to be one of my favorites just because I love it. And maybe it makes me a homer, <laughs> but, but I, I love it. And this, hey, you like what you like. Yeah. And this year, the 2022 batch that just came out, I mean, it's, I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, and had a lot of fun sharing that you with, want some more of it? with you guys at the, say, Oh yeah. I'm always going to take more of it, man, for sure. So that's, that would say that's kind of my list. It's not a great, you know, great list and a lot of stuff you're not going to be able to find, which 
Which kind of sucks when you say, oh, yeah, my favorite bourbon is the stuff that, you know. Yeah, but I mean, most like, those can't. were clearly like something that stood out to you and like. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing though, like that 15 year Nelson Brothers rice, 300 bucks. And I'm always the person bitching about price point, but I'd, I would, in a heartbeat, I would spend $300 on that. It's 15 year MGP. I mean, it's probably going back 15 years, you're borderline LDI, you know, like yeah. LDI Seagram's. Uh, like Hardens Creek at 150 bucks, that, that Jacob's Well, I would buy that all day long. Yeah. I mean, those are the some of these things with these high age statements. I mean, we're ninety is the new fifty. I mean, we're getting to that point now to where you just got to expect one hundred fifty dollars is like a seventy five dollar bottle from five years ago. So you got to be willing to spend a little more money, and it's it's worth it if you do. Uh, I mean, two hundred ninety bucks William Heaven Hill fifteen year, yeah, uh, exceptional. Um, I mean, there's it's really kind of hard to tie down a, a, an age statement to a price point. Those poor, I mean, they warrant it. I mean, they're they're good. There's a reason why they are LEs. Yeah. And, and I'll say, look at my list, and I'm the champion of the cheap shit at the bottom of the film. <laughs> and most everything that I everything on there, yeah, pretty, no, you know, was pretty pricey. Um, but that, I mean, I think the the 15 year old Pappy was really good this year. I mean, it was it was. Oh hell yeah! No, that's a, that, that was, was a, great. That, that good, was good a, blend on the four and yeah. Big Chief. I don't know if you've had it yet, but um, I'm sorry to tell you that Mike did not or uh, Mark did not buy you a pour. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't buy me a pour of it. Yeah, I might be able to send yeah. you a sample though. We'll see. We'll see what we can work out on that one, man. So I might have traded a bar of Parker's Heritage for a bottle of Pappy's. <laughs> oh, oh, I've never like worst trade in history for whoever got the Parker's. Oh man, that's awesome though, dude. Well, I'm glad. Congratulations to, hear. Well, to you. Yeah. What Parker's was it? Let me ask that. Yeah. What? Because you know, that not all Parker's are created equal. You cut out, Mike. You cut out. Give me the I rye. I need bottle. more rye. <laughs> I traded a bottle of the dick for uh, um, for a bottle. Um, I just I I got lucky, and that's just what we did. Well, that, that's awesome. Oh yeah. Sorry, Chad. I'm I'm You're, I'm hitting this rye again because it's I it's damn good. I can't believe you went in for another. Yeah, it's it's really good. This so, is like VIP all over. So what do you again. what do you guys think though in terms of the palate and the finish on this rye? What do you what do you get? I'll say a lot more tobacco on the nose after it sat a little bit, which I really like. But we've moved on to the palate and the finish. So what are you getting? <laughs> if you would give me a second, Marcus, damn. Um, I would say on the palate, I get a lot of really a nice heat, but it's not an overwhelming heat. Um, I think that this is a very approachable um damn near hazmat rye yeah what is this 130 132 132.9 132. yeah i think this is delicious chad what do you get man uh well since i put about four ounces of water in there on accident I but I, I, that too. I i doubled <laughs> up on i doubled up on on the whiskey hoping it would counterbalance uh i think the malt shows through uh r- really well it's got a, a very nice like mocha hazelnut mm-hmm. um espresso we kind of note you get those leather the tobacco and those are usually my favorite notes and a, and a rye so like that 15 year rye we talked about from nelson brothers that was like the the layers of chocolate oak tobacco leather the funky like dirt notes though this has that and it i'm assume I mean, it's just it's old forester we gotta assume it's probably around four and five years old i think this drinks well beyond its age uh, i mean it is from the, the highest tier of the rick house so you are getting a little more heat extraction there, so it does have some bitter tannins. But I'm a big fan of this. If if Old Forester only produced this product, I would be happy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Philip, what do you think? I I agree with him. I don't. I definitely don't think it drinks 132. Yeah, at all. No, no. Uh, on the on the palate, I wasn't getting the, all the classic rye on the the nose, but I definitely get it on the palate. I get that nice strong mint. You get that nice tingling feeling all of oh, yeah. you know all of your palate. Uh, I'm surprised how sweet it is. Really, yeah, it is yeah. I mean, a nice sweet I'm, rye. It's I, weird. That, I don't know if it's my, it's like I don't know if it's like a mental thing, but finding out the um, the mash bill on it, the mash bill, and seeing that high malt content, yeah, is really like feeding it to me because now I'm like, oh, that makes sense. While there's such a strong like espresso chocolate, note chocolate in yeah. there. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I was how, surprised by how much chocolate. How it, sweet, and yeah. you also like you all described too. You get some of that funk, like that barn funk from it too, yeah. which. Wasn't so, expecting that. Originally. So for for me, 
and I don't know if anybody else feels this way. So for me, everybody says the wheats are the sweet bourbons. To me, rye is always sweeter than the wheat. The we wheat, had this I conversation always, with somebody in the parking lot. I always like get a burn and like a almost like an indigestion feel when I drink a wheated bourbon. Really? But if I drink the rye, to me, they're always so sweet on the palate. Huh. That's interesting. I don't know if anybody else experiences That's, that. But. I had that conversation. Well, Chad was standing next to them too, but some people in the parking lot at Liquor Barn during the Pappy Raffle were having that same conversation about the sweetness. As I was pouring up Jack Daniels Bear Free Fry. Yep. Oh, Which nice. Very good. Yes. So, hey, Chief, what, what about you on yours? What are you, what are you picking up on your palate on yours? Um, This is actually a, a pretty sweet, sweet. Let me say that again. This is actually a pretty sweet <laughs> uh wild turkey product right here um very very i hate to say caramely uh you can say it man i i, I embrace uh, caramel and vanilla so yeah and pencil yeah, shavings, well. <laughs> and pencil shavings. <laughs> jimmy yeah, that's to be would, proud but there's also some of that uh honey nut cheer in there you know some some rich honey um and cereal notes on there that i love too um it's not overpowering it's 104 proof so it's not bad. Yeah. Um, going back to that rye, talking about rye being sweet, it could depend on which rye you're drinking. Are you drinking a 95.5? Yeah. Or yeah. A Kentucky rye. Yeah. Um, the Kentucky rye are not as sweet as a weeder, but when you're drinking that 95.5, those are the ultra sweet ones that are candy. You know, um, they're some of those can just be magical. And when I say I'm not a rye guy, uh. I'm not a rye guy, but I love those 95.5 all day long. <laughs> I, would like to all get, day long. I would like to get Big Chief's thoughts on that rare character. Uh, oh, that Barstone Bourbon Company rye? Yeah. Well, what, but that, yeah. We're talking about that, uh, well, that Amberana wasn't a rye, was it? That no, was it's a rye. It was, okay. it was Barstone Bourbon Company 95.5. Okay, then yeah. I want I want him to try that one. Curious what he would think about have that. To, have to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. I've if got somebody some sends it to me, he'll drink it. I would drink it. I'll <laughs> drink it. Hey, well, guys. Hey, Mark, could I, yeah, go, go ahead, man. Could I could I touch on you know you guys' private Facebook group, the Bourbon Lifers, real fast? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know you guys, uh, listeners out there, if you haven't joined that Facebook group, Bourbon Lifers, you need to join it. There's a lot of great conversation going on in there right now. Uh, Mark has three new moderators in there. Jason uh, Waller, he is a drill sergeant uh, from the army. <laughs> Uh, tired now. Um, Drew Allen, Memphis, he's in there. A band but loves his whiskey. Adam Boothby, uh, they're in there to make that group uh, fun and lively. Um, you know, um, it's just growing every day. I think it's going to be a great group, um, lots of fun. And I think you'll be surprised if you listen to the podcast and pay attention. You never can tell what you're going to get in the mail. That's right. Yeah, I saw Adam's post about that, man. So I was like, he he just ordered a bunch of sample bottles. So that's uh, that's a great thing, man. I appreciate you bringing that up, Mike, and and we appreciate Adam and those guys jumping in there and taking over the moderation and and continuing to help grow that and to weed out the <laughs> man. It was just it was too much for me to handle to try to weed out the people that were in there trying to sell bottles and just the, the fake bots and stuff. It was crazy. Yeah, so we gotta put Chad b- b- on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. No, no. <laughs> I well, hate, guys, I hate Facebook. We are at the end of round three, which means we're at the end of the show. But before we wrap it up, I think we need to get some final thoughts. Mike, since you're down there in Texas, join us for the first time, man. Give me, uh, give me some final thoughts. Man, I, I loved it. I love how the conversation flowed. Uh, everybody doesn't take themselves seriously. Um, <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. Uh, you know, I would. There's no bourbon experts in the group uh there's just some bourbon bullshitters there you go. i like to say uh you know and that's a nice He's catching have, on. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, well, i've done caught on uh, <laughs> um, yeah uh but i i love it um you know and i think the whiskey trip podcast will be a great fit and uh you know i think everybody will love what so as i have planned um you know, the diversity that'll be on that podcast, uh, not just about whiskey, but the stories that come behind the whiskey, you know, uh, I'm possibly might have the guy that wrote Tennessee whiskey on Dean Dillon. Um, I'm working on that deal right now. Uh, 
and there's a story there behind that song Tennessee whiskey so stories like that music uh food whiskey from around the world like I said uh some great stories uh you know you never can tell who's going to be a guest on there so just yeah, pay attention those episodes will be out in shortly I got to get my household goods here and uh <laughs> in the house sell my house in Kentucky a lot of stuff going on but I appreciate all the support and I'm glad that uh, guys and gals open uh, uh, the bourbon life up to me. Yeah, I man. Appreciate it. Happy to have you part of the crew, man. That's why, I, uh, you know, you, you needed a new home. You needed a place to 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 do what you do because you do a great job at it, man. So we're definitely happy to have you as part of that. So final thoughts, Philip. Woo, with a tear in my eye. <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> Wrestling. Oh, I'm so glad. You're going to go went. down there. You're going to wrestle them alligators. That's hey, what I'm waiting don't for. Don't forget your sign off for tonight. I'm, I'm not doing it. Matt, <laughs> final thoughts from you, man. Always a great show. Good to yeah. get everybody together. Mike, so great to have you. Looking forward to to hearing what you're putting out and following along, joining the joining the journey with you. Excellent. Stacy. what about you? Well, Mike, welcome. Welcome to the group of assholes. Here we are. Uh, also, really looking forward to, we talked about festivals, really looking forward to this upcoming year with you guys. So, stoked to be here. and yeah. Let's kick it. Definitely. Sounds great. What about you, Chad? Well, people talk about John 316. Well, Watson 316 said, so I just kicked your glass. <laughs> oh, man. Well, guys, I'm, I'm happy that you all were here. I'm happy we got to have some fun and fellowship food, man, just to hang out Woo! before the show and just uh, enjoy a little dinner together. Mike, sorry you couldn't be here with us, man, to to enjoy hey, that. He but... smells what you're cooking. No. <laughs> <laughs> man, everybody smells what the Rook's cooking. Don't you know that? <laughs> anyway, but we, we're glad to have you as part of the team and, and looking forward to seeing what you're going to be doing with your show, man. Can't wait to get that out there and glad you're getting a lot of support and encouragement from people out there, man. Uh, they've missed you and they want you back. So it's going to be great to to be able to work with you and, and help you get back on track to be doing that again, what you love and what people love to hear. Um, you know, we, we appreciate all of our listeners. We appreciate our sponsors, of course. Thank them for all they do for us, our listeners, wherever you guys are, whatever time of day it is that you've tuned in to listen to us. We appreciate you guys doing that. Please feel free to reach out to us. You can DM us on Instagram or on uh like Mike said, you can join the, the Bourbon Lifers. We'd love to have you in that group because it's really starting to take off with their new moderators. They're just doing an excellent job. You can email us at thebourbonlife at gmail.com. Um, and if you feel so inclined, leave us a rating, a good rating, though, <laughs> on, your, <laughs> on your favorite podcasting platform. But with that said, I'm going to wrap it up. Send us home with our tagline, which is may your glasses always be full and may you keep on living the bourbon life. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Bourbon Life Podcast. Our mission at the Bourbon Life is simple, to share our passion for all things bourbon with you every week. And we'd really love to hear your thoughts on how we're doing. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at The Bourbon Life. You can also contact us by email at thebourbonlife at gmail.com. And you can always find us on your favorite podcast platform. If you have a moment, we'd love it if you would rate us and give us a review. So until next week, we hope your glass is always full and that you keep on living the bourbon life.